Welcome to the hottest chapter of your textbook. Chapter five covers thermochemistry. In this chapter, we'll focus on energy, especially changes in energy. The first section of this chapter lays the foundation for how we think about and visualize energy. In chapter one, we identified two kinds of energy, kinetic and potential. In chemistry, we think of kinetic energy as heat, which comes from rapidly vibrating atoms. We think of potential energy as stored chemical energy, which is quite a bit harder to define. The best way to think of chemical energy is as energy which could become heat after a reaction occurs. We commonly represent energy on an energy level diagram, which is a useful way to visualize energy changes in a chemical system. In an energy level diagram, the vertical axis always represents potential energy. And the bottom axis can represent any measurement, sometimes no measurement at all. It depends on the specific system being studied. Just as a ball rolls down a hill, a chemical system will naturally seek the lowest potential energy. The difference between where the ball started and where the ball ends up is the change in energy. The next four slides will show examples of energy level diagrams, and each example will bring us a little bit closer to chemical systems. I'm sure you're familiar with gravitational systems. In this example, a woman holds a heavy block high above the ground. In this position, it has a high potential energy. You wouldn't want to walk underneath the weight. This system demonstrates a central motif of chemistry. Things high in potential energy are unstable and things low in potential energy are more stable. When a spring is stretched or compressed, it gains potential energy and loses stability. If the spring is released, it is free to return to its relaxed state and the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy of movement. As we saw with ionic compounds, opposite charges attract. This means that when oppositely charged particles are separated, they contain more potential energy and are less stable. As they accelerate toward each other, this potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. Finally, we've arrived at chemistry. You may recognize that gasoline contains a lot of internal potential energy. It will burn quite vigorously if exposed to flame. The burning of gasoline, whether in a car or in a dumpster, releases kinetic energy called heat. The products of this reaction, exhaust, contain less potential energy than the gasoline reactant. Therefore, exhaust is more chemically stable than gasoline, which is why exhaust is below gasoline in this energy level diagram. Time to practice this yourself. We'll see a lot of chemical bonding in this course. To break a chemical bond, you have to put in energy. When a chemical bond is formed, on the other hand, energy is released. Try placing the following two systems on the energy level diagram to the right. Just like it takes energy to raise a weight or stretch a spring, a broken chemical bond has a higher potential energy than when the atoms are bonded together. In general, as atoms make more bonds, they become more stable. Here's another energy diagram. This one's from your textbook. It shows an ionic compound. Positive and negative charges attract. So when ions are spread apart from each other, they contain a high amount of potential energy. Notice that in this diagram, the point where energy equals zero is up near the top. This might seem kind of strange, but the zero point is placed more or less arbitrarily. Chemists are much more interested in changes in energy than in any absolute measurement of energy. The author of this diagram decided to set zero equal to the potential energy of the ions if they were infinitely separated. As the ions get closer, their potential energy decreases. All chemical reactions can be explained by Coulomb's principle that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. All chemical energy comes from the attraction of opposite charges.